on behalf of the California African American Political and Economic Institute, CAPI at California State University, Dominguez Hills, and the Messiah's Ministries and Services, our strongest and faithful partner, I would like to thank you for responding to our invitation to participate in the CAPI training workshops. We welcome you to the first session of the Essentials for Nonprofit Organizations program. Dr. Michael Williams, who is our training consultant, will be talking to you more about the workshops themselves. We have a series of four training workshops, and each month you will get a workshop. This time we are scaling everything up. We want to be the model for helping nonprofit organizations succeed. We want to train leaders in the nonprofit organization sector so that you are able to meet the needs of your communities. I'm sure some of you already know that the California African American Political and Economic Institute is the brainchild of the late Assemblyman Mervyn Daimali and was created by the California State Legislature, Legislature, Legislation SB 1721 and signed by former Governor Gray Davis. One of CAPI's primary goals is to design and implement training programs for current and future leaders and business people. So we have chosen and demonstrated commitment to supporting non-profit organizations because the growth and stability of our communities to a very large extent rest on your shoulders. Collectively, you represent local solutions to local challenges and needs by providing services that range from medical and child care, workforce training and education, creative arts and performances, counseling, food and shelter, housing and economic development, and much more. Your organizations touch our communities in real and deep ways. And I just want to thank Dr. William, Michael Williams for being a strong partner in this program. You know, he is an expert in this field. When I first met him, he was helping me to start a nonprofit organization for our ministry. And ever since, I have always tended to him for expert advice. And I say to you today, if you have any questions, if you have any areas that you need help, today is the day to get that. And you will get a certificate at the end of the fourth training, so the certificate will be beautiful. The certificate you will be able to use in, when you apply for anything that you will apply and people will understand that it's coming from an institute that is recognized by the state. Good morning. Good morning. It's a good day to try again and welcome to what we believe be one of the foundational uh, resources for minority-led communities and organizations to get what they need to be equally successful as many other organizations out there. Now, one thing that I want you to do right away is take a look at there's a yellow sticker, note sticker there. <clears throat> I want each of you to write on that your mission statement. Not the name of your organization, leave that blank. But just your mission statement. And then I want you to just put it on the wall. Just tape it on the wall. Your mission statement. Even if you don't have an organization, you, you want, you, we want to know what you want to do. What you see your mission being. We'll get more into that, but just, just for that, for this five, few minutes, uh, without putting your name, say the Messiah's ministry exists to do this, just say, blank, mission is this. And then we'll get down, we'll, we'll, we'll say more, more about it, and you'll see the difference at the end of the uh, session this today. At the bottom of that, just put your initials, your initials. But your uniqueness is your mission and the focus of your mission. And I can tell a whole lot of folks here, we are not coming to take funding from somebody else. 
We are not, we're not a transitional house. We're not a supportive services. We are a capacity building coalition. Our responsibility is to help nonprofit organizations strengthen their capacity. And some folks got upset because I wouldn't go that way. I said, no, that's compassion to be able to money. So I started knocking on the door of those foundations saying, look, we want you to fund the capacity because X amount of uh, <coughs> service providers in South LA lack capacity. And that lack capacity also means that you can't afford capacity consultants because you don't have the money to even operate your program good. So we get them to say, look, there's X amount of service providers we're working with, and that's what we're doing. Provide, we're providing that capacity so they can afford it, and there you have it. So stay focused. But it's a serious time for minority-led organizations, churches, ministries uh, in this country. It is a serious time. And business as usual is no longer acceptable. And what we have been raised up to do is to provide this type of uh, information and, and, and training and coaching that will allow you to, to be competitive and unashamedly able to produce the type of outcomes your missions on the wall is going to, to uh, allow you to do. We believe that it's now time for communities of color to have the most effective minority-led organizations throughout the country that can stand shoulder to shoulder and say, yes, we can succeed in the programs we are. So I'm going to start at the rear and go forward. Take out, uh, there's a great sheet of paper that you have. Just hold it up right quick. Great sheet. We have just put in your hands access of $58 billion. It's in your hands. So if anyone says there ain't no money out there, that's not true. Now this is, this is important for you and all of us to understand. The myth, the curse of a, a jealousy that people use to communicate, ain't no money, ain't no money, ain't no money. It's not true. It is no money for any organization that does not have the qualifying capacity. Now let me just give some examples here. On the first page, these, these, are, uh, these are foundations that you can apply for now. But if, if so, your mission statement, if your organization is not in a, you can go and you can pay me quality amount of money to write a grant and you still won't get it. Because any effective grant writing is only 45% of the success of you getting that award. The other 55% is based upon your current organizational status and capability. Whether you have financial, they're not asking for your bank account anymore. They want a certified audit. You'll hear that in the second session with my friend and affiliate, Larry uh, Thornton. But you just can't hire somebody. In, in fact, once we get through with you in these three sessions, you will need a grant writer less than what you think now. Because we want to help you build a template for your organization to use to drive your efforts and energy to achieve your goals. Now, look on the second page, on the third page, page three. Now, this comes from uh, the Foundation Center up in San Francisco in New York. You see those little books on the side? What's the first book about? It's grants for who? What's the second book about? It's grants for who? And the third book is Grant for Who? And go on the back page, it's Grant for Who? And the third, third, the second one is Grant for Who? And the last one is for Who? Now when you look at it, let's go at the bottom, religious. Look at the bold print. That, that is available one billion. $1.4 billion for nonprofits providing services in religion. Now, does that sound like there's no money out there? Can I go up to the next one? For children and youth, $5.3 billion. Five, look at that, I do all my math right. $5 billion, $5 billion, $386,000. $798,483. 
started, and, and, and this announcement, you'll, you'll, you'll one up because this announcement, these funding announcements won't come out until the end of this month. But that's how much money is made available for the type of programs and services and ministries and outreach program that you're, you're talking about doing in your program. So, so number one, I want to demythicize the understanding that there's no money. I don't care if the government goes out of business. There's always going to be funding for nonprofit organizations that manage with the appropriate capacity and provide the outcome measurements that impact the environment. Now, I just mentioned somebody mission statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but in order to get to this, we have to deal with that, this on the wall. Your mission matters more than the money. A lot of people, a lot of minority organizations right now, even as I speak, are going out of business because they mismanaged money and they forgot to put the greatest priority is the mission of the church. <clears throat> I saw Larry sitting over there talking to, uh, thinking about my brother working with the film and said, I need to get with him. Yeah. That's what it's about, build relationships. No one ought to leave here a stranger over these three sessions. You need to get to know one another because there's enough for all of us. But the first thing that, cap that captures the attention of any stakeholder and investor is your mission. Your mission. Your mission statement. So let's take a look at that. Uh, I had missed some things. Someone know that answer there? I know, I know uh, my sister here may know it, because we did, Adrian may know it, but who, who can tell us uh, who is the founder of the nonprofit organization? Anybody? No, I want you to hold yours. You got your blessing coming. I got something for you. Anyone know the founder? I give you a hand. He said, Jesus. Who? Y'all not quiet with that word. Jesus. 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 All right. Quiet. Well, he's the first founder of faith-based organization and a successful founder. Yes. And, who's, and anyone, if anyone comes after me, you can do the same thing. You can be successful as a faith-based organization. I like to put that in there because that's my boss. He's the boss of the Messiah Ministries and Services. Now, let's look at our session. What we want to do is identify some common nonprofit management deficiencies among minority-led organizations. Now, I'm going to focus on minority-led organizations. You know, and if I was at Harvard or some of the other big schools, I have to be more inclusive. But I'm exclusive here because that's the mission of KPI and Dr. Farusa to work with minority-led businesses and organizations so that they can have the type of capacity that allows them to be an equal, equal uh, person, an organization to serve our communities. The next other thing we're going to do is understand understand and crafting a mission statement, a vision statement that creates an organizational sustainability and mission success. Underscore that. Whatever your mission is, it's got to, it has to be able to project in confidence that you are able to sustain what you're going to do. And then have mission success. The other, other thing that I don't have on there is this. Introduce the best practices of governance and leadership structure. My brothers and sisters, African Americans, minorities of organizations are going to jail right now. Right now, some in this community, some in communities you know. You don't even have to read the national news media. The, you, the rumors that organizations who have gone down and and embezzle money and miss money is simply because of that third thing. They're not governing themselves properly. And if you're going to get any, any funding, successful, I'm going to leave the money part out, successful resources, you've got to learn how to manage it right now when you don't even have it. Your related trip and expense to this, this uh, training today is an expense related, business related expense. 
from your house to here, from the parking attendance fee and the registration, that's all business related. You need to be able to, to, to document that. And if you, uh, if you registered online, you also got a confirmation. Mm -hmm. That's your receipt. And when you get your parking ticket, instead of throwing it out the window in the dashboard, you tack it on to your registration form. That's your receipt. At the end of the year, if you don't have a, bit, uh, a business and, 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 and you're working from home, you ought to designate a portion of your home where you're working as business-related expense. That includes your mortgage, a piece of your mortgage. That includes your utility. That includes your phone. Wherever you set up business in your house, that could be business-related expense. And Larry's going to talk about that more in detail next, next session. But first of all, let's look at some things that we all can say amen to. If you can't say amen, amen just say mm. <laughs> These are common problems that 95% of nonprofit organizations are experiencing. Number one, poorly structured or lack of functioning board. Got my cousin on that. Got Nene and Buche in. And, you know, I got all my folks there, so everybody can say eyes have it when I want something done. Uh, <laughs> X, X, X. Poorly structured or lack of functioning board. What do you mean by lack of function? Don't mean, don't have regular meetings. Uh, when they come, they just want to see how much money was raised. Uh, none, of, none of the duties and responsibilities that's associated, related to that board, responsibility. Number two, lack of governance and legal structure. 85%, I'm staying in the 80 and 90 percentile range on, this, on these issues. 85% of minority-led organizations have never completed their exemption process. I know some churches that say, well, we got an EIN, so we a federal employment identity number, so we're tax exempt. I said, I'm a long way from that. That's the folks out there believe that because they have an employment identification number, that that makes them exempt from as a nonprofit uh, 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 organization. No, it doesn't. The, the, the governance and legal structure means that number one, when you apply, who's, who's, who needs to apply for 501c3? Before you sign those papers to apply for your exemption status, you need to read it. Because what you're saying that by law, I am going to operate this nonprofit organization according to the rules and regulations and the yes and the no's that I have documented on this form. But most of the time, we get somebody to, to, uh, to do it for us, and we just sign it. You'll be surprised how frustrated I become that I don't do it no more like I used to because I started taking some of that stuff back because people I was doing it for, well, I'm going to do that. I said, you can't do this with this. Well, yeah, they say, I, they say, I said, no, I'm telling you not. You can't. And they still on that side, I tell you, well, give it back to me because my name is on it. And you, whoever is bootlegging your directions, you hang out with them, but you cannot and will not under the circumstances take what I've done and stick it in there, and all of a sudden, you get certified, and then you start doing stuff the wrong way. There are three exemption processes that must be completed within an 18 to 24-month period of time. One, properly uh, articles of incorporation submitted to the Secretary of State of California. Two, properly Franchise Tax Board Form 3500 must be submitted. And three, the Form 1023 to the IRS. Now, most folks have got one and two. One and three, that is, they got their state incorporation, and they got lucky and got their 501c3. But they did not complete the Franchise Tax Board 3500, which means that if you have been in operation for any length of time and have not completed that, you're being fined $800 a year and don't even know it. Your organization is being fine. If you have not completed the Form 3500, 
for your own nonprofit organization. Annually, the state is finding you $800 plus in. Now, you want to know no more? See Larry, I'll come back next session. And the third thing is, is that many organizations have went off on their own after they were approved as a 501c3 organization and never adhered to the very first compliance and regulations that's necessary to function. <coughs> See, they asked you some questions on that. Name your board of direct directors. And then you said, well, it's Bay Bay and Joe Joe and my granddaughter, my niece and my brother. And then the next question they asked you is that, are any other names up there related? Now, it's easy to say no, a lot of these to tell. Because you want to have folks on there that's going to roll with what you say. So what comes to bear is when, you, when they start auditing and reviewing you, that comes up. And every name that's on there becomes liable for derelict of their responsibilities and duties and can be <coughs> penalized and imprisoned if it's extreme. <clears throat> so the third thing is poor understanding and communication of purpose. That's because the mission, mission statement does not carry the type of, of, of understanding and recognition to allow your organization to function on its foundation. Without a good mission statement, you have what they call mission drift. And mission drift is every time you hear about some money, you go over here. And they said, well, we just, want, we just want some folks who drive Cadillacs, and you don't even have a car. And you try to apply because you want a Cadillac, even though you don't know how to use a Cadillac. And then you don't get it because you drifted. And while you're over here drifting, trying to make sure your programs or your appearance or your activities are conducive to that, the very thing that you were supposed to be working on over here is going underserved. Less energy. If you're, with, if you're dealing with children and youth, you may run over here and try to deal with a college program that has nothing to do with your mission and while you're spending your, your grant money to pay somebody to write a grant, and spending, trying to get some desks and chairs to look like you got the program going on, your core mission over here is being neglected because you're taking money here and putting it over there, and when they say no, you come back here, there's no resources or energy that's needed to keep your organization going. That's called mission driven. You gotta be strong in understanding what your mission is about. The fourth is a general lack of planning. And that's a curse in the minority community. Communities of curse. Color. Lack of understanding. We always want to do it our way. We always want to do our way. And most of the time, our way is out of compliance anyway. A lot of churches are going to jail right now, losing property because they're doing it our way, their way. Historically, I mean decades, generations. Well, that's how we've been doing it. Because one, two, three have never been taken to the most next level to develop and mature. Number four, a general lack of plan, particularly in the areas of program admin and financial management. The most important question that any organization should raise before developing any community program is why do you exist? Why do you want to exist? I hear some folks say, well, yeah, I want to get some money so I can. You know, I can kind of help them. You know, they talk about the, home, uh, the hungry uh, in L.A. Folks ain't hungry in L.A. They got no food, all right? Food ain't the issue here. They get, look, I've never seen so many fat homeless persons. <laughs> Amen. I mean, everybody in South L.A. is feeding somebody. They got little trucks taking food here and there. They ain't hungry. All right? So some things you have to get ready to understand and understand what your mission is. If you're going to feed folks, okay, go on and do that. But just understand that they may need more than you when they sit down at that table and say, 
you know, I got two children in the car, and I, I was too embarrassed to bring them in because they don't have good clothes. I got one child that has some uh, mental health problems, and I didn't want to bring them in. Are you, are you listening to where your keys are? And that one meal with that one person, they got three social issues already. I'm out of a job. I can't take my child to school because they cut up. They don't know what's wrong with five issues. Now, you just said a meal. What else can you do? You should have a network of others so that you can learn how to pick up the phone and say, hey, Larry, I heard you got this house over here. You got 14. You still got the room? I got a person over here that make, you know, that really needs your help. And I work with you to get the paperwork in order. Okay, matter of fact, I'll bring them over if you got them. You don't have to come get them. That's collaboration. It should be documented by both. We took one of our clients over to Larry's place. And Larry took him over there to, to the film uh, youth program. So three out of five problems are being addressed at the same time. That's why we need each other. <coughs> why do you exist? There's no use in creating an organization, and this is a personal note, if you don't know why you exist as an individual. If you're not stable in your own way, you can't mess with folks who are unstable. It's just a tsunami waiting to explode. So you got to understand what's the confidence in, in, in you. You know, uh, when I came into South LA in 2009, uh, and I introduced myself, my name is Michael Williams. I'm a servant of the Most High God, and mission and, 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 and failure is not a fact. He said, what's wrong with this food? Where you come from? That was my, that's my personal mission. I come to reduce to more than 8,000, help to find a way to reduce to more than 8,000 homeless people living on the streets every day in South LA. They say, yeah, right. And since that time, we leveraged over, we kept over $4 million from being taken out of South LA, and we increased $3.4 million over the last three years to, to come back to LA, South LA, to service providers who were doing it and trying to do it the right way. My mission, my personal mission, is that I'm on a mission because I'm a servant of the Most High God, and failure is what? <laughs> when you know who you are, when you understand who you are, you can declare that, and you don't have to try to get anybody else to endorse it. It's you. You need to know. So when all hell breaks loose, when the funds are funny and folks don't want to come around, are you still going to be who you are? And if you can be who you are, then you can create the understanding on why you exist as a community development program. So why do you want to do this? We ask some questions. When you talk about missions, what is your basic purpose? You'll be surprised. A lot of folks, especially the churches, think that that's free money that they don't have to pay back. <laughs> and I said, look, let's go on do this 501c3 because you know, I was sitting there with Michael Williams and Larry, Larry Thornton, and they said, we can, we can get $5 million if we grow this way and get this thing. What we need to do. And they go on and pay for the, for the application process and perhaps get it. But then they turn around, uh, Ryan Conklin, preacher, embezzled over a million dollars over an eight year period of time from a church that was falling down and he was living in a multi-million dollar house in Corona. They called him when he went to jail. I ain't called him names. But y'all don't understand what I'm saying. So this is crazy kind of stuff that makes stakeholders and funders gun shy from investing in our organization because of those common 10 deficiencies and management deficiencies that they know exist. And that's one of the reasons why you can't, you, you, it's hard for us to get funding that we rightfully deserve. Let me give you one other case. 
In the homeless situation in South LA, the county and the city spends $1,494 annually for one homeless individual. In Santa Monica, they spend $3,484 for one homeless individual annually. In South LA, there's over 8,000 homeless individuals. In Santa Monica, there's only 3,200. Now you do the math now. We get only $1,494 to house them, to feed them, to provide supportive services, and make sure they move into purpose supported house with $1,000. $494. And in Santa Monica, they gave them a sunroof deck. <laughs> on, I'm looking over the beach, watch the moon, the sun set every day. Are you with me now? Yes. With, 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 with less than, 50% less than, right in South LA. What is, the, what is the issue here? One is, Mission, unsuccessful, organizational destruction, immature, are not established. And so in order for HUD to keep giving the county and the city money, they reallocated around other counties and district areas because where it's needed most is there is these deficiencies that are the impediment not because of our <coughs> color anymore. And see, where we fight is that when we work with your organizations to get into a capacity, then we're knocking on the doors of these same decision makers and saying, it's time for you to reconcile what you've been doing because we got some organizations who's able to do it now. That's a new growth of organization. So, key things to understand about what we need to get done. Now, are oh, we on time? It's a, we, we on time. Let's look at your mission statement. Then we're going to start at, you know, because I'm not presenting this. I, I want us to work together. Number one, it begins with the organizational purpose. It tells why the organization exists and what results it intend to achieve. In response to these basic questions, and then today you're going to do your, do your mission statement, redo it, revise it, or whatever. But consider when you're asking the question, step one, why do you exist? You ask that. We exist because of what? What is the need? What is the purpose? We exist because they shoot up everybody in our community within a five mile radius. We exist because people, our homeowners are losing their homes. We exist because kids don't have, uh, uh, because kids are failing in school, we want, to, we want to turn that around. Next thing, what is our business? Our service, our product, and our actions that accomplish that. Don't drift. If you want to help kids between the ages of 5 to 15, stay in their zone. Huh? Yeah, if, if, you, if you want, if you want to exist, stay in your zone. If you want to do homelessness, you can't do all of it, but pick the one you, can, you want to do best. And that picking the one that you want to do best, stick with it. Because people like me and other resources who understand what you're doing, we can direct resources to you rather than you running around trying to find them and don't know, don't have no connection. Here's the key. To get successful funding, you need to build relationships. Somebody asked me, what was I doing up in Wine God? I was going to see the president of Wine God. I want to let him know. I'm in South LA. I want to let him know what I'm doing. Because Wine God has declared that there's a lack of consulting within LA County. He's also saying that there's a lack of, of uh, capacity in LA County. But he didn't say South LA, so I want to say, well, here's a more specific South LA statistic. 
We can't get the money because you're not helping us with capacity building uh, uh, support. And what does that mean? For me to come in and work with you 12 months, that's a consultant agreement. That consultant agreement could be in the thousands. But instead of you having to foot the bill, we have set up non, uh, foundations who are going to reach out resources to work with you to build your organization if you know why you exist. Now, everybody ain't going to qualify for this, though. Some folks want to throw you off. You know, they want to say, okay, I'm going to roll with you. Then when they get the money, they go another way. But for those who really want to do it, God has set folks in your path to help that get done and do it the right way. So when you look at this, why do you exist? Why do your organization? That's what we want to ask in the next few minutes. Why do, you, why do you exist? What is your organization? Now, look at the key points here. Mission statement must always include active verbs. Active verbs. And these active verbs is indicative of what you are doing or what you're going to do. And if these active verbs are not in your mission statement when you go to a stakeholder funder, that's all they're going to read. Because it's a file 13, and they send you a form and say, well, thank you for applying, but at this time we have so many of uh, applicants and we decided not to fund you this time. Never telling you that, we don't see what you're going to do. Active verbs indicate how you're going to achieve your initiative. Now, when you go back to look at active verbs, look at these examples here. Here's one for shelter partnership. Shelter Partnership Incorporated is dedicated to alleviating, preventing, ending homeless by assisting in the development of short-term and transitional housing and supportive sites, services, and yada, 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 yada. Where are the active verbs? They're the ones underscored. Shelter Partnership is dedicated to alleviate, prevent, end, assist, and develop. Did I miss one of them? If you don't have any active verbs in your mission statement, then that's an indication that you need to show what you're going to do, tell what you're going to do from the outset, instead of saying, uh, using a 15 other page to explain what don't need to be explained. The other one is United Way of Greater Los Angeles mission statement. Look what it says. United Way of Greater Los Angeles is committed to creating pathways out of poverty so that everyone who lives in the community can have a better life, quality of life. We are focused on providing long-term helping, helping, helping. They're doing something. See, if you want somebody to buy something, uh, invest in you, you got to show them what you're doing. You got to convince them that you can do it. Now, that's pretty long for United Way, but they got, they got a, a legacy. They got money, too. So they can say what they want. But and, and even in that, in the mission statement, it's what? Helping, it's creating, it's providing, and helping. And shelter partnership is alleviating, preventing, and developing. Developing what? And that's where your programs are. If you want to know this, how to describe your program, describe as to how you're going to alleviate the, 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 the problems that you're serving. The client, tell us how you're going to prevent not intervene, but prevent. See, that's the key here. When grant writers, uh, readers read your stuff, if, 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 it doesn't, if it doesn't click with the mission statement, they are through looking at it. And they may glance at your financial statement if they are audited. You can go out to $5,000 a day, but you still have to have audited financial statements if you're more than a year old. Larry talked about that more in of itself. That's why I said, have a perfect grant writer do your grant. For foundation and corporation, you don't need a grant writer. You just have to take time to develop your mission statement and the other components that we're going to share uh, today. Here we go. Here's the task assignment. Go back to your mission statement. Write it down. And you got some forms inside your manual to assist you. On page 9 and 10, we want you to work on that. 15 minutes. Let's talk about 
that. And then let's look at it. Here's La La. Los Angeles Region Home and Restoration Advisory Coalition. Become a collaboration of faith and community-based organization churches working collectively to reduce homelessness within South LA by providing, by influencing, by leveraging in a targeted area. That's what we're doing. Always look for your, and, and you don't need a whole page. You know, who, 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 who says, uh, have it your way? How you know it's Burger King? It's Brandon. It's Brandon. When I tell them, you know, when we come to reduce homelessness, it catches their eyes, their ears. So how are you going to do that? We never know. Okay, check us out. Here's how we're going to do it. Working, reducing, providing, influencing, and leveraging. That's how we're going to do it. Over a period of time. 